Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here to share with you my outside the box ideas that I created with the August 2021 paper pumpkin kit from Stampin' Up titled Hope Box. These kits, which are delivered straight to my mailbox each month, contain everything that I need to make fun, creative paper crafting cards and projects. This month's kit contains supplies for making nine Hope-themed cards three of three different designs, and a few extra supplies for repurposing the box that the kit came in. Each kit includes a publication like this one with directions, full color illustrations, details about the kit, and a link to access a how-to video so you can assemble the cards or projects as shown. The kits also include inks and stamps that can be used again and again even after the consumables are used up. The August kit included a Blackberry Bliss ink pad and this exclusive stamp set. Paper pumpkin kits are just $22 plus tax per month in the U.S. Shipping is included, you control which months you get your kits, and there's no commitment or obligation. The kits are a Stampin' Up! product, so the colors, images, and supplies always coordinate with many other products they have. I'll be using some of these in the alternate projects I create today. You can find the items I used listed below and linked to my online store, along with links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription through me so I can spoil you with exclusive ideas, gifts, and prizes, joining my paper pumpkin fan club on Facebook where you can see even more alternate project ideas shared daily, and if you're watching my video on YouTube, a link to my website where I've shared photos of the projects I'm going to share with you today. I received a large clear block with my first paper pumpkin kit to use with all my future stamps. That tool and my scissors are the only extra items I really need for completing my kits as is. But you'll notice that I substitute that block for the ergonomic Stampin' Up! blocks since I have several of those. I also use my larger version of the ink pad and some additional adhesives such as stamp and seal. You won't need these, of course, but they are available products from Stampin' Up! and they're a bit easier for, and quicker for me to use while I demonstrate in my video. By the way, if you're looking for ideas for past kits, visit my website at stampyourartout.com, click on Paper Pumpkin in the top menu, then choose Recent or Older Posts. I've been creating and sharing alternates since March of 2013 when Paper Pumpkin first began. I'm excited to create, so let's get started. There are a few staple items that I often recommend in my videos to have on hand for paper pumpkin alternates. And one of them is the medium uh, basic white envelopes and another is the basic black cardstock. We're gonna use those items on this first project. It's gonna be a card. We're gonna cut this one in half. So our cardstock is eight and a half by 11. We're gonna cut it at the five and a half inch mark here. And then we're gonna rotate it and we're gonna score two different places. We're gonna score halfway through this direction. This is eight and a half um, in the width, so we're going to score at five and a half, or I'm sorry, four and a quarter, and then we're gonna move that section to the uh, two and an eighth inch mark, so that's half of four and a quarter. And what we have here is a Z-fold card. And our Z-fold card is actually gonna open in this direction. Oftentimes I make it this way, but we're gonna make it this way this time. And that's because of the design on the envelope. This is one of the kit envelopes. We're gonna cut it in um, into three different pieces here. So first let's cut it so that we're going from the base of the envelope inward. And we're gonna cut that to four inches. And that's gonna leave us with a little line going through the flap of the envelope here. There's a little score line here. And we're gonna keep that. It's not gonna matter because we're gonna cover it up with a ribbon. So now what we wanna do is we wanna be able to open this envelope without tearing it too much. So we're gonna trim off the two ends. We're just gonna trim off a little bit from each end. Don't worry about any measurements at this point yet with these cuts. We just wanna make sure that we can open the envelope. So now that we've got it open, we're gonna cut along the score line. So you're just gonna line that score line up with the channel of the trimmer. Make sure that you have a sharp blade though. If you don't have a sharp blade, you can, you can fray the edges 
So I, I just changed out my blade so it's nice and sharp. So now we have two layers here. This one's gonna be our main layer and it's gonna go across this section of our card. So you can see already that it's a little bit long. We wanna trim this, it's already four inches in this direction, um, which is a uh, quarter of an inch shorter than the height here, because this is four and a quarter, and this is four. This is five and a half, so we're gonna make this five and a quarter. So let's flip it around, place it into our trimmer, and we'll cut like that. So now we have the perfect layer for the inside of our card. Now we're gonna take this one and we're gonna trim it. This piece here, remember, is two and an eighth inches in width. So we're gonna cut this down to just under two inches. So one and seven eighths. And then we also wanna make this five and a quarter inches long. So now we have this piece that's gonna go across the top. Now, if this little portion of the envelope, there's a, just a tiny bit that I had in there, um, bothers you, you can trim off just that section first and then cut to five and a quarter inches. I didn't have a lot of that showing though, so I guess I, I didn't see it this time. This piece here is gonna be a smaller piece that's gonna go on an extra layer for the front of our card. So we, I've already cut out a piece of basic black cardstock, an extra piece that is two and a half inches by three and a quarter. And that piece is um, going to receive another, another um, piece of the envelope. And we're gonna make that a quarter of an inch shorter in each direction. So if this is two, what did I say? Two and, uh, two and a half. So if this is two and a half in this um, direction up this way, we're gonna make that two and a quarter by three inches. So already it's almost two and a quarter. So what we're doing is we're lining up this edge here with the two and a quarter inch marking on our trimmer. And we're gonna cut off to flatten this side out a bit. Okay, I know it's not a lot and we didn't go all the way to the corner. You can still see some rounded edges here, but we're gonna go ahead and slice off one of those rounded edges and then we're going to come in the other direction and we're going to slice right there. Now this is the point where you can kind of figure out what you want. How much blue do you want showing? Um, the card, I've already made a sample card this way and I actually had less blue showing. I kind of cut in a bit here so you could do that or you could leave it as is. I think I'm gonna trim mine in a little bit <laughs> again. I just don't want that much blue at the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut off a little bit more and then we'll bring it in here and we'll cut at, what was it? I have to remember again, <laughs> three inches. We're cutting to three inches. Okay, so now we've got our layer that's gonna go right here. Okay, and you, again, you can see that score line, but we're gonna bring in some pretty ribbon. There is a ribbon that just debuted in the mini catalog. It is called White Glittered Organdy, and we're gonna use that on this layer here, and it's going to camouflage that score line. Before we do the ribbon, let's do some stamping on this layer and on this layer of our card. We're gonna use the big, huge stamp in the kit that says always hope because you never know what tomorrow will bring. And I've already got that mounted onto my D-size block. We're gonna use what's called the masking technique. And for that, you can use masking tape. You could use washi tape. You could use sticky notes. Masking tape is something that a lot of people have on hand. So I'm gonna demonstrate with that. And we're gonna cover up a portion of our stamp. So what I did is I just put masking tape over the very top words, making sure that the other words are still exposed. So I've covered up the always hope. And we're gonna ink up our stamp now. I'm using Memento ink. This is our tuxedo black color. And you can see as I'm inking it up that the masking tape is getting some ink on it. but it's keeping the rest of the words 
protected. We're going to stamp that at the top, or towards the top, I should say, of our main white layer. And you can see that the Always Hope will not be inked up. And now we have that. And for the, the other piece that's going to go on our card, we want to ink up the other portion. So I'm going to clean up my stamp. My favorite stamp cleaner tool that we have is our mist and scrub combo. Um, we do have something called a chamois, or you could use like baby wipes or, um, you know, a washcloth um, that's wet or whatever. But this is nice because the mist actually helps to keep your stamps strong, um, conditions the stamps. So we're cleaning on one side and we're drying on the other. Now you don't have to um, use masking tape or anything like that if you're really good at just inking up a portion of a stamp. So you could just use the edge of the, the stamp pad and be really careful and just ink up the portion you want. But I'm gonna cover it up and I'm gonna go ahead and ink up that lower portion. Notice I didn't put masking tape over the whole thing. You don't need to do that. Just need to protect where you might stamp. And that is gonna get placed right here. And because it's black ink, it goes over the top of the envelope um, pattern paper design really well. Now we're gonna go ahead and add these pieces onto our black layers. We'll start with this one first. That quarter of an inch really gives a nice border to this piece. I'm using seal adhesive, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And now we're just gonna take about 12 inches of this ribbon and we're gonna tie it into a knot. And I don't, I don't tape my ribbon down before I tie it. That way, if I want to, I can curve my cardstock layer and I can adjust where that knot or that bow is going to go. I'm gonna use my scissors that I've designated for ribbon. This is my sharper, my sharper scissors. I like to put a little ribbon on it so that I know not to cut paper with that. That piece is ready. Now let's go ahead and bring in the bone folder tool. Not a necessary tool, but a nice luxury item to have. And we're just gonna make those creases nice and sharp. We'll come in and we'll add adhesive across the other layers and add them to the front and the inside of the card. And now we have two more steps to do to finish off this card. We're gonna add this layer and we could add it directly with some seal adhesive, but I'm gonna use the dimensionals that come in the kit. And I know that I'm gonna add it like this so I can put two dimensionals up at the top and I'm just gonna go right across where the ribbon is and where the cardstock is. And that's gonna hold my ribbon in place. And then I know that I'm gonna come a little bit further down, but I'm not sure how far down, and I don't wanna have dimensionals sticking out underneath here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take two more dimensionals, and I'm gonna place them onto the actual card. So I'm gonna place one about here, and one about here, just so that I, I'm safe, okay? I know where they're at. And we'll peel off the backings and add that to the front. Now what I did is I just used the envelope and the stamps, well I guess and the dimensionals, from the kit to make this card. So if you replace the envelopes in the kit for your other kit cards that you're making, let's say you want to make your cards exactly the way they are in the kit, but you want to make use of the envelopes also to make some extra cards, then grab those and you can double the kit by using every single envelope in this pattern. Now, one more thing I wanna to add to this is the little fun self-adhesive sequins. Now, let's say you use all these up on your first kit cards. You can bring in uh, another packet of sequins that are very similar and have every single color in this pack matches the colors that are in the kit. And these are called our Artistry Blooms Adhesive Back Sequins. I've got a more used up pack here. You can see the blue color matches really well. This is more of our um, pinkish, purplish color. 
and then we have an orangey color and a yellowy color. <laughs> and I say orangey and yellowy. They're not like exact colors, which is great because they kind of coordinate with lots of different oranges or lots of different blues or lots of different purples, etc. So I'm going to move these off to the side. Actually, I'm going to add one and I'll just show you. You can either use your snips or you can use what's called um, the take your pick tool and you can grab your sequin like this and you can place it down. Um, I'm gonna move that one off to the side for a minute and I'm gonna show you a finished one. Now this one has a different ribbon on it. This is our pool party sheer ribbon um, and I put that on there because it matches the colors really well. So that's where I put my sequins. That's the look of the card when it's completely done. Now on either of these ribbon, they, because they're pretty light, you could use what's called blends markers. And so I'm just gonna grab this little piece here of our um, uh, white glittered organdy, and I'm gonna grab a blends marker. We'll just take this one here. This is our dark melon mambo, and we're gonna color directly onto the ribbon. And you'll see the color, because it's a sheer ribbon, it's gonna go through to the surface here. We're gonna let that dry, but I'm gonna bring in my pool party sheer ribbon and show you what I did with that one. So I have six different colors on here. I've got the dark and the light of the Blackberry Bliss. I've got the dark and the light of the, um, what is this one we call these? <laughs> Sorry, of um, Melon Mambo. There's so, there been so many colors with Stampin' Up's history that I sometimes get them mixed up. Melon Mambo, and then this one here is Coastal Cabana Dark and Light, which isn't too much of a difference. And again, this is on Pool Party. This is on our Glittered Organdy. So there's a little bit of a difference here. This one, this one has more of a pure Melon Mambo color, and this one is a slightly like more purplish because there's some blue underlying on the ribbon itself already. So, um, but what's nice about that is, you know, it is a light color that you can color if you want to. And I actually did. On this one I took and colored pumpkin pie on it. So it's our dark pumpkin pie. You can see kind of still the blue tone underneath. So if I used the glittered organdy, I probably would have had a more pure orange, but it still works, right? And here we have the oranger sequins from the, um, from the Artistry Blooms kit. And I used a different envelope. So I just used a second envelope, did the same layout, just a different look. And then here we go. And this one really tells you why we needed to make our Z fold card um, in this direction instead of this direction. The envelope or the butterfly really stands out on this envelope. It does a little bit on this one too. And you wanna make sure your butterfly isn't going sideways or whatever. So this is our third envelope. And this time I took the dark melon mambo color and colored on the blue um, the pool party uh, sheer ribbon. And I used the purplish pinkish sequins. So different looks depending on what ribbon you use, depending on the envelope, but you can double the cards in your kit just by using those envelopes in that way. By the way, we do have dimensionals in the online store available to you if you happen to use all of your kit dimensionals on your first set of cards. So that, um, that is one tool that you might wanna invest in also. So for these cards, what did I invest in? I could have invested in extra dimensionals, um, extra sequins, blends markers, ribbon, whether it was the pool party or the sheer glittered, um, the white glittered. I added an extra ink pad, the envelopes and the black paper. But if you wanted to save money, you don't need to color your ribbon. You could just use your white glittered organdy ribbon um, as is on all, all of your cards. Um, and that means you wouldn't have to use the blends markers. In fact, if you have passed twine or ribbon from another paper pumpkin kit that's white, you could totally use that. Uh, sequins and dimensionals, you wouldn't necessarily have to invest in either if you're very good at not using up too many on your first set of cards. So really, this is your base investment in order to make the cards as I just did. Not too bad. Let's work on the next project. I love the bright, rich colors of this kit. Because they are so rich and bright, they look magnificent against black cardstock. So that would be another reason to invest in some black cardstock 
for this kit. We're gonna make another card using the black cardstock as a base. And this time we're gonna use one of these pieces. And actually what I did is I started making a card using um, this piece and messed up. So I peeled it away and realized it looks stunning against the black paper. So it's already cut up into different pieces. We're gonna make use of it. I've cut this piece of black cardstock to three and a quarter by four inches which is the perfect size for this piece because this piece will fit inside there really well. Now what I actually did was I stuck this against one of the white cardstock bases of the kit. Let me grab that. Oh, here it is. So you can see there's a cardstock layer in there and I had applied it to this and then trimmed up the edges and then I said no and I peeled it away. <laughs> so this piece actually sits inside the black with about an eighth of an inch border on each side, so a sixteenth of an inch when you center it like that. So there's a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. But I wanted that, I wanted that look of a border, so I went ahead and I trimmed it a little bit bigger. We're gonna use um, our silicone pad and some uh, a piece of sponge, and then we're gonna use the multi-purpose glue. And we're gonna go ahead and put a little splotch of that glue. And then we're gonna take our sponge and we're gonna pounce into that little area of glue to pick it up, kind of spread it out on the surface of our sponge. And we'll come in and we'll add that glue across the back side. I'm trying not to move this um, cutout piece from my kit. I want it to not have any glue on the front of it and then we can take that and add that right over to this piece here. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. <laughs> we're now gonna take that second half of the basic black cardstock and we're gonna put a score line through it at the four and a quarter inch mark. And that is gonna give us our basic card base, like, you know, the type of card bases that you see in the paper pumpkin kits. We're going to use this envelope scrap that we had from our last card, and we're going to trim off. A few of the pieces so that we end up with something that, let's see here, maybe three quarter, three and a quarter inches by one and five eighths. I'm just making a white layer. It doesn't really matter the size um, because you can use any stamp set that has sentiments. You can use a past paper pumpkin kit. You can use a stamp set that Stampin' Up! has available in their catalog or online store. I'm gonna bring in a stamp set called Biggest Wish. This is one that's available for um, at least through the end of April. <laughs> um, and we're gonna go ahead and stamp um, some words on here that don't have to do with hope so you can you know bring in other words and and make cards that are birthday cards or thinking of you or thank you this stamp set is great for the um, two-tone look of a phrase so we're gonna bring in the color that comes in the kit or you could use any other color um, poppy parade Bermuda Bay there's all kinds of colors in this kit but we'll use the blackberry bliss and we'll use the tuxedo black as our two different colors for our happy, we're gonna ink that in at the actual color. Um, this is a pretty deep color, so to make it lighter, I'm gonna stamp off three times before I stamp onto this paper here. Stamping off is lightening the color, as you can see. And now we're gonna go ahead and stamp that in the upper left corner. like so. So we have a nice light version. Then we'll use our birthday with the full black ink. And there's our fun little sentiment to go on to our card. Let's bring in our card base. We're going to add a white layer to the inside. We're just going to use up that scrap that I kind of messed up. <laughs> this is the sticky side. This is the side that's not sticky. If some of the creases are bugging you, you can take a bone folder tool 
and you can kind of smooth things out. I'm also adding some adhesive to all the edges this time instead of just the corners because that'll help to hold it down. So this will go here. And before I stick it all the way down, I'm going to reveal that I have some pieces that I cut off from when I added this layer to my white earlier. So these are all the little pieces that still remained. And I'm gonna go ahead and add those here and there on the inside of the card. Um, this one, I think, would fit real nicely down in here. Let's, let's just lay it out really quick. And I think that's where I want them to go. So again, I'm glad I didn't press this white layer all the way down. I can tuck these pieces inside. So I'm gonna grab my glue again. And you don't have to use all of them. <laughs> um, also, you'll wanna wash off your sponge in really warm water right away before the glue starts drying on it. Um, and kind of pounce off any excess before you do that. I just trimmed off a little bit more. Um, the less white you have, the more of this you'll see. We're gonna add this to the front of the card with the dimensionals. And you really only need one in each corner and that will give you the illusion that the whole thing is up on dimensionals. Just like this is centered here, we're gonna center this piece this way, make sure your butterflies are going in the right direction. And then this piece can go on top here and we'll add that also with dimensionals. Um, I'm gonna put it kind of off on the side here so that we can see a bit of this butterfly, sort of like that. So I wanna make sure I have dimensionals here. And I'm gonna move this one a little bit because you can, you can feel there's a dimensional underneath this section here. And when I mail my card, <clears throat> if I don't have dimensionals right on top of each other, like that one was on top of this one, if I don't have them on top of each other, then when they squish down into the envelope, they will only be like one dimensional thick. It's just best for mailing. Now, if you want to, instead of using this flimsier white scrap from the envelope, you could definitely cut up one of the cards in your kit or another one of the white layers but I was trying to make the most of my kit here. Oh, that's just too fun. Happy birthday, and then a place to write on the inside. I am a huge fan of fun fold cards. For the, so for the next two projects, I'm gonna do a couple fun folds. This one is probably the most complicated, but hopefully with my step-by-step -step directions, you'll be able to make one yourself. Um, we're gonna bring in the trimmer, and we're gonna cut our card base that has the blue color to the same width as this piece here. And this is about three and five, uh, three and five eighths. We're gonna trim it in this direction. Three and five eighths. And that is gonna leave us with two skinny pieces here and two pieces here, because we're gonna cut each of those in half. We're gonna cut them in half at the score line. And we're gonna, gonna cut this piece to the same height as these, and that is four and a quarter. And we're gonna use every single piece here for this fun fold card. We're also gonna bring in the white layer and a couple other um, little pieces. We're gonna use uh, the envelope. Oh no, we're not using the envelope on this. We're using um, the hope, and we're gonna use that big floral die cut piece that we used on the last card. And this is the way our main layers are gonna to go together. So we're gonna have the blue upside down on the back side. We're gonna have this white one in between and we'll have this printed one on top. We're gonna to work with the white one first. Oh, and ignore these pieces for now. These are gonna be little arms that come out and then this piece is gonna become a layer 
just like our hope piece and our floral. So we're gonna work on these main layers first, this one in particular. So these two we'll just set aside. Again, this is the one that is blue and we just flipped it over for the back. So for this piece, we're gonna bring it to the half inch mark over here and we're gonna cut a slit. And that slit is gonna be, um, I think I made it about two and a quarter inches wide. So if you look at um, the, the, the dimension here, it's th four, and th uh, four and a quarter. And if we go in an inch this way and an inch this way, that's gonna leave us two and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna go slightly beyond that. So I think I'm gonna start instead of at the three and a quarter um, mark there, I'm gonna bring it just a little bit further down and cut a little bit further beyond the one. Okay, so I'm cutting beyond the one and beyond the three and a quarter inch mark. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And it's okay if you go a little further um, than that, but don't go too narrow. Now we're gonna grab something from the kit that people don't typically use, and that is the plastic. <laughs> you can either use this plastic or you can use the baggie that the, um, I think it was the dimension, the adhesive and the sequins came in. So I've already used the baggie on a sample finished one. I'm gonna show you that soon. Um, and I've cut it in half and then I've trimmed off the edge that's attached to the side. And this piece is about two and a quarter inches, which is why I was suggesting two and a quarter inches. You can make this narrower, but the wider it is, the more stable your um, slider part of your card is gonna be. Yes, we're making a slider card. So we're gonna trim off this little piece here at the end, because we don't need that. And it's okay if it's not a straight cut, we're gonna, we're just making a little plastic loop here. In fact, let's go ahead and just cut that off here too. Okay, so what I did is I put the bag in here, I trimmed it, then trimmed off the edges, and now I have this strip of plastic. And it's also okay that there's like little, there's little holes in mine. <laughs> okay, it's just a strip of thin plastic, like the cellophane bag, whatever you've got hanging around. Maybe you threw those pieces away, you could use, you know, anything. You could use another, as long as it's a thin plastic, okay? So let's grab this back in, and now we're gonna slide this plastic into this slit and into this slit. Now, if you follow my blog, you have seen me do a double slider card just recently with some other Stampin' Up! products. So you can go back and watch that video to see another version of this card. Um, but um, if you didn't, if you don't follow my blog, you're seeing it for the first time maybe, I don't know, but um, you're gonna love this. It's such a simple little mechanism to make a card a wow card. So again, just slits, put some plastic through there. Now we're gonna connect it, and there's a lot of extra plastic here that we don't need. I think I'm gonna bring my sharper scissors in, and I'm gonna trim off kind of um, the wrinkled portion of the bag. And we'll just overlap these. And I want it to be about a half an inch or so overlap. Okay, so there's my overlap right there. And we're gonna connect this with some tape called uh, tear and tape. Okay, so I just added this dark layer under here so I could see where I was placing the tape a little bit better. <laughs> so you wanna put the tape on um, this top edge and the underneath side here because when we connect them, oh, do I have a little sticky there? Can't have any sticky. We're gonna have to trim it a bit. When you connect them, you want them to have a little bit of a wider base here. Yeah, so that's why it's important to put the adhesive right to the edge but not over the edge. So we're gonna connect them like this. like that. You can see kind of with the, the backing still on there, what that looks like. Let's peel off the backing. Now when you connect, don't connect too tight. I did that with my first one and it's really hard to slide it. So kind of, kind of on the looser side, not super loose, but not tight. Okay, and this little piece of plastic slides. 
back and forth in two different directions. You don't want it to have to go through to the other side anyways. It's okay that it doesn't go through those slots, but that it at least goes back and forth. Next, we're gonna add, um, we're gonna move this taped area over to this side, and we're gonna add this piece about an eighth of an inch overlap in there. And how did I figure that out? Because I'm gonna take and bring in one of our cards again, and I'm gonna lay this on top, and I'm gonna center it. And you can see, actually it's more of a, more of a quarter inch overlap, okay? So you can see that we don't want to go beyond that, that area there. So we're gonna tape this to that. This is tear and tape, but I, <laughs> I like to cut my tear and tape. Okay, so this section needs to get adhered to that section, and you want it to be pretty straight. So we'll use the lines of our grid paper and we'll make sure everything looks like it's lined up. Okay, and now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing to this side, but with this piece going in that direction, okay? And actually here, let's look at the, this is the front. This is gonna be the back. We want the blue side to be showing. So when we flip this over, we want to have the blue side down now. I tend to lose things on my desk when I do a bunch of projects at once, and I couldn't find this at first. I'm using my fingernails, and I'm like, oh my gosh, where's my take your pick tool? Okay, so this is going to line up, so it's also going straight, and it's... Um, it's kind of in the same path. So let's go ahead and take this section and line it up with some lines on the grid paper, like that, about a quarter of an inch in, that should work. And let's test it to make sure it fits within, yes, it's gonna fit within an envelope. Does that make sense? So we wanna be able to fit this in an envelope. It's in the closed position right now. This is the front, this is the, um, the back, like that. And now I'm gonna show you the actual finish card that we're doing, and we'll finish assembling this. So let's set this off to the side. This is the finish card. And when you pull these little guys here, they're actually gonna pull into, uh, they'll pull with only pulling one side. So if I'm hanging onto this and I pull this, and again, I had a very tight loop. The other side pulls out. You see that? That's called a double slider. It's so cool. Where there is hope, there is faith. So we're gonna finish this now. We need to separate this middle contraption of the card, the mechanism, with some dimensionals that things that, there's, so that there's not a lot of friction. So we'll grab our dimensionals again. Now you could decorate your pieces before you assemble them. In fact, if you have really complicated, elaborate pieces, you'll wanna do that. But I decorated after. <laughs> it worked for me. Okay, we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna add this one to the back side the same way. Now here we have the double dimensional width. It's gonna be a thicker card. So you'll need to have an extra ounce postage if mailing in the US. And why do I have my blue side on the back? Because this is where you can write on your card if you want to. You can also write, of course, here on the flap, you know, where there's hope, there's faith, and then just sign your name. Um, but I think, I think that this would be a great place to put some wording too. And so we might as well make it a little pretty with some color. Now let's do some decorating. So we're gonna, let's test out our slider. Oh yeah, there we go. Our slider works really well on this one. Okay, and so let's grab and do the, the tab parts first. So we're gonna keep it closed and we're gonna add a couple little strips here. And 
And that'll kind of give us a guide to how far we can decorate inward when we're doing this. And that's gonna go here. And you know what, it's so funny because on my first card, these strips went the whole way. <laughs> okay, we're gonna peel this up a bit. It, it, they did, they went the whole way. So now we're gonna have to trim this one down the same distance as that one so that we have kind of a little border. That's crazy. And it happens, I guess. Okay, so I have a little bit of a white border showing. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go in a little bit more on that one. It's all good. If your seal doesn't sit too long or you don't rub it, it can be peeled back up. <laughs> there we go. So now we have a little bit of a border on each one. But now we also have a limit to where we can decorate beyond. So if you look at this, you can see I stamped in the upper left and the lower right, and then I added a couple butterflies. And these butterflies are strategic in how they're placed. They're not coming all the way out because when you do this sliding back and forth, again, this is my sticker one, when you do the sliding, you don't want it to catch, even though there's a little gap in here, you don't want it to catch. So you don't wanna have something far out that's gonna catch on this edge. All right, so now we can decorate the front and we're gonna have this here, but we're gonna decorate it with that beautiful floral piece. Now on my finished one, you can see I used that half. That means I have another half left and here it is. <laughs> so we're gonna do the other half for this card like that. Let's bring in our silicone mat again. Now I did this on purpose. I let this sit and wait a little bit. We're going to bring in some packaging tape and we're going to clean this up. It magically lifts up that adhesive. So now we have a clean slate ready to go. A couple different looks there. I brought the hope up a little higher so I could see more of that butterfly. But same concept. So fun. Okay, if you recall, I mentioned that most of the paper pumpkin cards come in this size where it's five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter, so you can fold it in half this way. Um, that is because they fit in the box. <laughs> Sometimes Stampin' Up! will do a long you know, a type of card where it's folded in half this way instead. So it's still the same size card base, but it's cut uh, in a different direction from the eight and a half by 11 um, cardstock that it came from. So um, there's some folds called book binding cards that a lot of people are doing right now. And basically what that is, is it's from a card base that is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And then there's an extra score line placed in here, four and a quarter inches in, so that you have this four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch section. It's kind of like this square little section, which is aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's really a nice look to have square cards, um, but square cards actually cost extra postage. Don't, don't know if you know that, but um, at least in the US, they, they requires some extra postage, even if there's no thickness to it at all, just because it's a square base. So this is how you can get that fun square look um, because we're going to make this stay downward and it's gonna kind of look separate from the card. Book binding, it kind of has that little binding edge here. But we're gonna do it with the kit card. So how do we do that? We're gonna bring in our trimmer and we're gonna cut 
right through that score line area. We're gonna put a score into our cardstock at well, either direction, because it's the same little pattern here. Um, but we're gonna score at four and a quarter inches so that this section of the card is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And we're just gonna attach it together because that's the way these cards come. They come attached together. Let me show you a finished card from a team member. This is from Jenny Reader. Um, she did this as her swap card. It's such a pretty card, right? And so there's the focal square layer with the binding. And as long as this stays attached here, it doesn't matter if it originated from whatever kind of card base it came from, right? We're just gonna attach it. Oh, and before we do that, I'm actually gonna add some fun ribbon in here. So we're gonna put some adhesive down into that area, because that's gonna receive the ribbon from the kit. Now, we had some cards at the beginning that had ribbon, but I think that this ribbon might be too large. You, maybe you could try trimming it through the middle. I don't know, I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> but I thought it was a little too large for our first set of cards, so I did not um, use that but we're gonna attach one end and then we're gonna bring it around and we're gonna actually put a little cinch into our ribbon. So you don't wanna have it too tight, but you also don't wanna have it too loose. Grab our ribbon scissors here. Just make it kind of, I don't know, it's, it's stretchy ribbon. So we'll just go ahead and attach it. We can always lift it back up again. But that is going to get cinched. Let's see if that works. Yep, it will. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and attach this whole layer to the back. Go right over the top of it. Add lots of adhesive. This is where maybe the glue dots themselves aren't going to cut it. You could use the tear and tape if that's the one you invest in. There we go. So I just stacked the layers together this way so that I could line up those edges. And there is our base for our book binding card. Next, we're gonna cinch it. We're gonna use um, some cording. You could use twine. Um, I'm gonna use the silver because the silver is close to kind of a whitish color. And do you see what I did here? I colored it. I colored it with that blends marker so let's just slip this underneath and see how much I need to color. So if I'm gonna do a little bow, I probably need about, um, about seven, I'll use seven and a half inches. Let's bring in the grid paper that I took away because it got really dark and messy. <laughs> and then we'll bring in our dark, um, dark Blackberry Bliss color use the brush end of the marker and this definitely has two you know like multiple sides to it it's kind of a rounded kind of um, twine so when we're adding the um, blends marker to it you're gonna have to probably turn it over flip it around see there's more silver on this side so the color doesn't necessarily go through And you might get dirty fingers, yep, as you go, because it needs drying time. And I'm not giving it drying time before I'm touching it. <laughs> in the meantime, let's cut some extra layers. So we're gonna bring in Blackberry Bliss cardstock. Blackberry Bliss is such a stunning color. It's the color that matches the ribbon. We're gonna trim this to four inches by four inches. This is just a scrap that I had on hand. And then we're gonna take our envelope and we're going to open it up. That way we can make the most of this beautiful layer. We're gonna cut that to three and three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches. Save that. That's like designer paper, isn't it? <laughs> and then we're gonna stamp on the circular layer from the kit and this piece here. 
We're gonna stamp butterflies. Rachel likes her butterflies. We're gonna use the Blackberry Bliss ink, the kit, the, the kit color, right? And we're gonna stamp a butterfly um, as much as we can on the left side onto that circular piece like that. And that's gonna get placed in the middle of our square. And so we're gonna eyeball that, you know, where the placement is of that. And we're gonna stamp a couple butterflies coming out from underneath, but we're gonna stamp off. So we're gonna lighten the color a bit. And now we're gonna try to do that masking technique, but without using masking tape. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just inking up the portion of the stamp that I need using the corners for that lower part of the Y. And there we have the word always. We're gonna layer all the pieces together now. I was noticing a couple areas where it didn't quite dry yet. It probably pooled up in sections of the um, twine. This might be not the ideal um, ribbon slash twine to color, but it will dry. It dries on non-porous surfaces. And on the inside, let's stamp an extra butterfly, just for fun. In fact, let's stamp it off onto some scrap paper. we go. And there is our finished card. If you don't color the um, twine, it can look silver, which is totally fine too. But this way it kind of matches the, the sequins of the kit. For the last project, I'm going to do something 3D and um, I'm going to use some stays on ink. Now stays on ink is not recommended for the photopolymer or totally clear stamps like this. It's a very harsh ink. So I've got my cleanup pad handy. I'm just going to clean it off right after I've used it. But it does work well on cardstocks that are coated, like our vellum. Um, if you have glossy cardstock, that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's a solvent ink and it will dry on non-porous surfaces. Um, so we're gonna ink up the words that say um, where there is faith, there, um, miracles happen. So we're inking that up and right away we wanna stamp onto our vellum. We don't wanna have a lot of wait time. Oh, that middle section is not inking up for some reason. Get as much ink out of there as possible. And you'll notice even with the best of cleaning and cleaning right away, you're gonna get some staining of your stamp. But that happens with the regular colors too. This was just used with the Blackberry Bliss ink, um, which is a water-based ink. So our photopolymer or totally clear stamps are porous. Some people swear by using Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink, using that first, cleaning it off, and then having that ink kind of fill in the porous areas of the stamp. I haven't found that that makes much of a difference on my photopolymer stamps, but you could try that if, if you'd like. So if you didn't notice already, the theme of this kit is hope. The sentiments all talk about hope. Um, this kit was inspired by Shelly Gardner, who is the co-founder of Stampin' Up! And um, the box that the kit comes in is meant to be decorated. Um, now, if you had a box that was ruined in shipping, it's not guaranteed to, to you know, arrive safely. You can use a, a past paper pumpkin kit box or any other box and add those fun little decorations to it. So we're gonna make not a hope box with um, this last project. We're gonna make a hope um, candle or a hope, um, a candle jar or a hope jar, we can call it. So we're gonna use these little peach jars that come in the annual catalog. The vellum piece that I have here is seven and three eighths inches by one and three quarter inches. And we're gonna just wrap that around one of these cute little jars. So to do that, we're gonna use again, a strip of the tear and tape adhesive. Fine, there's like a little seam 
to the jars on either side, I think, to on, on two sides, yeah. So you'll just find that and um, kind of keep that those on the sides. And then you'll wrap this around and make the connection nice and tight. Now you are able to slip this off and on, you can see. So if you want to, you can add just a little bit more adhesive, um, maybe to the outer edge of your vellum. Here, I'll show you. So you could first take and put your adhesive on like this so that it's gonna connect to the jar in that little area. And then you can add another little section next to it because you can see back here that I had room for another one if I wanted to. Okay, next we're gonna take our fun little ribbon that we've pre-colored this is about 12 inches, just so I could make a little knot, but you could use a longer piece if you want to, to put a bow on. And we can shift that ribbon. So pretty. We're going to take the jar, the cap, uh, the cap of the jar, and now we're going to bring in those glue dots from the kit. Don't throw these away. If you're somebody who likes to use seal like I do, just know that these have value. Whenever you have a really, really tiny piece that you need to connect, these come in super handy. And then what could you put inside that jar? You could put um, a note, like a handwritten note. You could put um, some little rocks, um, uh, some beads, something that just kind of, maybe a necklace or um, you know, um, an antique piece of jewelry from, you know, handed down from, from generation to generation. You could put a candle. If you do put a candle that is um, a candle that you would light with flame, um, you might want to just let people know that they probably don't want to burn it inside of a plastic jar. Or you could put like a, an electric tea light, one of those battery operated ones. But hey, here's the advantage to um, not having it taped down. Look at that, I can twist this. Because <laughs> you can't really see the seam of the jar anyway, so you can twist this to kind of line up with your butterfly that's on your cap of your jar. There we go. That is why I forgot to add my Terran tape. <laughs> Isn't that pretty though? Just a cute little project that you can give as a, as a gift to send someone a little bit of hope. So now that you've watched my video, I hope you can see that there is so much more to these kits than meets the eye. With just a few extra supplies and some imagination, you can go beyond and make so many more things with this, these super affordable kits. I hope I've inspired you. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can catch more Paper Pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my website at stampyourartout.com so you can view close-up photos of these projects, see photos of other paper pumpkin kit ideas in future and past posts, and see many other great ideas that I share using Stampin' Up! products. If you want to get spoiled with extra goodies, gifts, prizes, and extra exclusive paper pumpkin project ideas, remember to get your subscription started with me as your demonstrator by clicking on my personalized link below. So what's in store next month? Experience everything autumn with the Haunts and Harvest Paper Pumpkin Kit. This kit includes enough supplies to create 12 treat box boxes, four of three different designs in apples, pumpkins, and jack-o'-lanterns. Plus, the box itself is designed to easily transform into a vintage wheelbarrow. So cute. So make sure that you have an active subscription by September 10th. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.